I think that God can do anything this week. And so I believe that we're gonna see people healed. Students are gonna not just know what they believe, but who they believe in, personally believe in Jesus. What if after this week, Orlando could be known for something else? What if every time a student thought about Orlando, Florida, instead of Disney World, instead of Mickey Mouse, instead of all these rides, they thought about how they had experienced the Holy Spirit. So what if the summer camp wasn't just about entertainment and fun, but what if it was about a deeper relationship with who Jesus really is? It's kind of crazy to me that we did the documentary three years ago. I look back at that now and I'm like, <laughs> what were we doing? <laughs> now, this ministry looks significantly different and God has done a lot of stuff ever since. You know, Rhythms dropped two albums. This is the gospel was significant. When that album came out, that was something that kind of stirred something in our team to help us know like, are we going deep enough? Are we actually teaching teenagers how to have a faith for themselves, like legitimately? But like, did we challenge them with anything? Did we give them a call to action? Did like, we make them hungry? And that's probably where January 2023 brought us. Tim decides to have an offsite with everyone associated to our youth ministry, I'm talking youth directors, youth content creators, anyone with the title of youth in their staff role on an offsite because he wanted to share the vision for how we're going to start off the year strong. And uh, it was at that offsite where Tim was like, okay, this year we're going to be about unity. Mm. So I was like, there's a lot of people doing a bunch of different things. Cool, it was working for a season, that's great, but we want to be unified in a new way. So let's let youth nights be these nights of e-group time. All they're talking about with eight people is the Bible or the Holy Spirit. Boom, that's it. And then rhythm nights, we're giving them a little bit of, a, of an experience. We've got worship, we've got a teaching that's a little more sermon. And then, then when you go to Youth X, it's like, yo, everyone coming together from all of the campuses and being able to see those little like, those little moments happen. It, it's now not one thing has everything. It's the culmination of it all now has everything. I think our intentionality changed real quick. And when we saw it unify and we saw it simplify, it was very apparent something shifted. You know, so when you start talking about Youth X 23, ah, you can't not talk about that May Rhythm Night. Don't overthink, don't complicate it. No strings attached. He loves you, he loves you. Everybody needs, everybody needs, everybody needs safe. This is all you get. And if you never make that decision, your eternity is going to look a lot different than mine. And we don't want that. That's why this building's here. That's why we do what we do here. That's why the church has been going for 17 years. It's for the gospel, nothing else. It's for you to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for some of you tonight, you're gonna push doubt aside. You're gonna push doubt out. And you're gonna say, you know what? I want to make the most of the time I have on earth. Once he did that and it was clear yeah. and it was simple and it wasn't confusing and it wasn't packed with a bunch of different ideas. It was like, hey, this is it. And I think that's what set the stage for Youth X. So we've always had Youth X at Ballantyne. We've done it a billion different ways. We've done online, we've done high schoolers and middle schoolers, um, but we've always been in the room. And when we set out for Youth X 23, knowing that we were gonna be in Orlando, 
That brought a lot of questions. Transportation, room assignment, advertising, meals, worship experience, the merch, branding, packing list, the ratio of leaders to students, and how do I get there? Finances, setting up, rhythm, medical teams, battle eggs. I just had such anticipation for what God was going to do. God had done so much in our lives this year already. It was like, oh my gosh, what is God going to do in these kids' lives at YouthX. And so there was so much excitement and anticipation for it. I think that really took over more than any anxious, anxious thoughts. We get there the Sunday before. I'm just trying to scope it out. It's the first time I've actually been there. My entire family's there. And my wife, um, it was the Wednesday before it all started. And my wife said, are you gonna get the staff all together, the people who are already here, and talk about youth X? And I went, well, I, I, like our youth directors aren't even here. Like I know there's some people here, but our youth directors aren't here. Like, like I, don't, I don't think so. She's like, no, well, I think there's a lot of people that are here. It'd be good to like hear some vision. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll do it. I'll see if the team can meet. During this time, I was a lead intern, and so we went down a couple of days before, um, obviously to help set up and kind of prepare for YouthX in any way that we could serve possible. And um, the night before, uh, Pastor Tim got together everybody uh, that was there at the time, and we were just like, hey, we're just going to have a moment, um, and we're just going to pray. So I'm pretty sure we finish, we finish rehearsal, and people are walking into their auditorium, and Tim's like, okay, time to, time to pray. I walk in. 120 people, people already there. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, okay. That's a lot more than I thought. I'm glad I'm doing this meeting. So I start talking about what I'm gonna hit on. And Tim just starts um, kind of opening up the night and pray over the idea of things yet to be seen. Like we believe that God is gonna do things this week and these nights and these mornings that we've never seen yet, we've never experienced yet. We couldn't even like dream up in our own imagination. Tim said, go wherever you wanna go, um, pray how you wanna pray, but just touch some seat, touch something. And so at first it's funny cause it's just kind of awkward. Like I think we're we're building a culture of, of prayer and of, of those moments that feel kind of awkward sometimes. And and so sometimes you just don't know what to do in those spaces unless you're, you've are you been in them enough and have developed it enough. And so I'm praying over seats and I'm just going in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never prayed like that before. And I am going in on all of like six different seats. And Pastor Tim comes up to me, he's like, he's like, he just does his thing. He looks at me, he says, come on. Uh, I get up and we go to the front and it's about, um, me and, and five others um, that are up there, we're in this circle in a kind of like a huddle. Um, and uh, Pastor Tim, he's like, okay, you guys are gonna get on the mic and you're gonna pray. Um, you're gonna go one at a time. He said, it does not matter what you say, it does not matter what you pray, okay. but you're gonna get on the mic and you're gonna pray. Um, and in this circle, it's something just, I think the Holy Spirit just came in the middle of that before anybody touched the mic. And we began to just pray in the spirit, pray in tongues. And it just was such a strong moment of prayer. And what it brought me back to uh, was my grandmother um, because she taught me how to pray. And so it was just that in that moment to be able to pray for the place that God was gonna move wow. in those students' lives, in the leaders' lives for those next four days. Yeah. It was just such a cool moment to be able to just take the time to talk to God and to mm -hmm. pray to him about what he was about to do for those students. The Lord, we stand here in this place of surrender because we love you, Father. Let a fire burn at the altar so that every student, every leader, every staff member, every person, every volunteer, every chaperone that is in this room can see what you're doing in this room. something different you know about because it's easy to pray whenever you're at the moment when uh -huh. all the students are there um, but be able to take the time to pray when nobody's there when you haven't seen God do something yeah, yet and yeah. have the faith to believe and say Lord I'm gonna pray to you even when you have not done it yet yeah. I'm still gonna set the set the place and set the atmosphere for you to move so, and so that's kind of what the, the power in the moment was is we set the atmosphere that moment was the moment I needed in order to know everything that was going to happen for the next four days. Then when 
when the event starts, there is a little bit of like letting God move in the way that he wants to move. There was a lot of things that were introduced at that youth act of like, this is the first time we've done this. This is the first time we've been to Orlando like this. This is the first time we were like all in the same hotel same time i'm like okay there's a lot of new things that we we're doing and i remember tim telling us like okay there's another new thing we're gonna do we're gonna do and implement pre-service prayers the students started you know coming in the very first night that we did it um like they always have rushing in the room kind of it's loud it's crazy and tim's on the mic on the stage and he's like all right come in this is the first thing they see when you really think about it, it's like it's our oh, yeah. first thing of youth X, but they're coming in excited. We're coming in like this is a serious moment. Mm. So that moment did not mesh well didn't together mesh, yeah, at first. Well. And the kids are just mayhem. <laughs> they're running around. They, But that is what they have been used to doing. And I can see, because I know Tim, I can see kind of the frustration level to like start to build. And so he's like, okay, okay. All right, calm down. He's still like trying to stay really calm on the stage. And I remember Tori Hammer was sitting next to me and she, and she was just like, and I was starting to get flustered too. Of like, oh my gosh, how do we get these kids to like, you know, be quiet, do raise service prayer. And Tori was just looking and she was just like smiling and, and kind of laughing. And she was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And I was like, what? And she was like, they don't, they're like babies. They don't know what to do. We have to teach them. We have to teach them spiritually. Like they're not, they're not aware. It was so rough. And I remember after the debrief with all the youth directors, they were like, yo, should we stop pre-service prayer? Cause that was rough. And I was like, you know what? It was kind of rough. Zalker is weird, wasn't it? So I'm in my mind like, okay, he's getting ready to say like, we're going to do this instead now. Right. But he's like, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what we're going to change immediately. Mm. But I still believe in that moment. I said, I don't know. Just something my spirit doesn't feel like we can like get rid of pre-service prayer. Mm. I said, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Teaching them how to do it? And that moment was like light bulbs clicking like, oh, yeah. That's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. I was like, so let's just do it. But like, let's teach them. So each time we would run pre-service prayer, it was something different. When you watch the first time to the fifth time, oh, it was like we had just gone through faith boot camp. Like, no, nah, they're maturing. They're growing. They're developing. They're experimenting. They're coming into their own. Ah, this is a defining moment for them. Leading up to Youth X, I was actually pretty resentful. Um, I didn't want to go. I was very upset. The first day we got there, everyone was checking in. I was petrified. <laughs> um, just that I wouldn't fit in or that I wouldn't get along with people. I didn't really know the culture since I was online. So I've never been in an in-person experience for anything of Elevation before. And so, yeah, I ended up messaging my mom. I was like, I'm coming home tomorrow. <laughs> She first was like, just give it, just stay one night. That's all. She's like, I'm not going to force you if you don't want to be there tomorrow. Um, I'll come pick you up. Just give it one night. I ended up staying and my leader pulled me aside. She saw I was being really quiet and kind of antisocial. Um, she's like, hey, when I came to Youth X, my first time, I had a lot of anxiety as well. Um, and my leader prayed over me, so I'm going to pray over you. And then we went into the first worship experience um, and I was just able to fully give over everything to God in the moment. Um, I was like, you know what? If I'm here for one night, I'm gonna make it worth something. Um, and I remember them saying, you know, if you're walking in with anxiety or with like burdens, just give it over to God in this moment. And I was like, this is silly, but may as well. And so I did, and I just felt this overwhelming sense of peace and relief. And I was like, you know, this is, I'm supposed to be here. And I texted my mom that night. I was like, I'm not leaving, I'm, I'm staying. And need it. And God said, you keep singing and I'll keep slaying. And together we will bring Leviathan to his last breath in your life. I'm not staying depressed. I'm not staying defeated. I'm not staying scared. I'm not staying bound. I'm not staying 
been addicted to this Leviathan, let me. Leviathan, let me go. Say it. Leviathan, let me go. Anxiety, let me go. Spirit of fear, let me go. Spirit of shame, let me go. Spirit of suicide, let me go. Panic attack, let me go. Go! Addiction and generational curses. Let me go. Give him praise. You're talking 407 salvations on that night alone because he brought to life scripture that was just so relevant and in tune to exactly what these teenagers needed, which is what he's gifted at him and, and, and obviously what he's graced for. I remember Tim said, I'm gonna tell each speaker that's coming, uh, don't bring your best sermon. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what does that mean? He's like, I'm just gonna tell them like, don't, don't come. What he meant was obviously like, they're gonna come prepared, but he meant like, don't come trying to do some flashy, exciting thing for youth ministry. Come and speak to like something that's really deep that God has spoken to you, that's rooted in just scripture and the word without a lot of stories or fun, you know, I don't know, other aspects to it. But just come and like, we're just gonna open up the Bible this year and we're gonna read it because that's the only thing that can transform someone's life. Not my stories, not my funniness or anything like that, but the word of God. And so I remember when he said that, um, I don't know, there was just something different about the prep. So typically at a Youth X, we have tons of videos, tons of openers, because the idea is to wow these teenagers with an experience that they'll never ever forget. And yet in Youth X 23, we decided to go in a different approach. And rather than going back to what we were always programmed to do, it's just like more, 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 more. We prayed, okay, God, like maybe give us the right stories, the right teenagers, the right perspective, so that everyone can see themselves within our programming. Hey team, um, there's a really cool story coming from Gaston and I have to share it with y'all. There's these two guys, they've been friends for a very long time and God is doing something special in both of their lives and I'm excited to tell y'all about it. He was my best friend and I was like, you know, like my best friend's in a hospital. So I was, I was, I was very scared and I, I wanted to know like what was happening. They talked to his parents like, 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 hey, what's not waking up, I'm kind of scared. When you look at the Spina Bifida book and you're reading it, you see all the things that can happen. Seizures not in the book. He had a seizure in 2016 and it was traumatic. He had three seizures, five minutes apart, all right there the same day. He was in a comatose state for nine days. We said, we know Kaden will get him up. When I first met him, I don't know what it was, but I just, he was such a cool person and, and um, I just, Something just, I guess, I don't, I don't really know. When him and Caden got together, they just bonded quickly. It was like instant best friends. Caden immediately became like, I love this kid. Like, this is the coolest kid. And of course, Luke was like, I love this kid. Like, this kid is looking at me as a kid. And he came to the hospital and all of a sudden, Luke's away, Caden's like goofing off, playing with him, getting him up. Luke's wide awake, the nurse comes in and was like, what is going on? One way I know God is using me 
it was that hospital they Tatum came. And in that moment, that's when I knew God was using me. Oh goodness, now I'm tearing up like that. It just means something special to you, right? Yeah. Everything that you went through and yeah. and your friendship with Caden, it's really important to you, isn't it? Yeah. I know. Zoom forward a few years later, I went to the first youth night. I uh, had an amazing time, and then Dylan says, invite a friend. I was actually talking to our youth about, hey, y'all are not too young to change the world. And one of the ways that you can change the world is by inviting your friends to youth night. I text Kaden. I was like, yo, hey, I got a, I got a small group I want you to come to. Um, he's like, all right, let's go. He's basically up for anything I do. I, do. I was wondering about, you know, like, I didn't know what I believed in, and so I was, I was, you know, really wanting to try to figure that out and actually explore it. And so when they asked me and he asked me, I was like, you know, this, this is, like, I guess, a sign. And I wanted, I was like, okay, I'm going to go. I was wondering now, I said, is this going to, you know, is this going to take with him or not? So he was very consistent with youth nights, talking about the curriculum, opening up his Bible, um, and just being able to uh, learn what God has for him. And so I just kept on going. I just kept on asking questions. It's like I said, just invite them, get them there, and let God do the rest. He showed up and God handled it. We were in the car and I asked, I was like, can we do it? And they said, yeah. He was riding back with Luke and Luke's parents. And after a few more questions, he said, you know what? Okay, I'm ready to give my life to Christ. And I say amen, and then we were all jumping around the room, and, and mom touched Dylan. As I'm heading to the bus, I get a call from Luke's mom, and Luke says, guess who just gave their life to Christ? And then he's like, who? Um, now I turn the phone to Kaden, and then he's like, He's like, Kelly, then what? How, how do you feel? I honestly, I do not think that I would be here if it was not for Luke. My family does not go to church, and so I started going to church like with them to vacation Bible school. And so, if I did not meet them at all, I would definitely not be where I am now. That night, I got saved, and, and like Luke likes to say, it's, I saved, saved his life. life. And I and he saved, saved his life. life spiritually um so yeah that's basically how it It was absolutely insane. I've never seen our youth ministry completely break down with the awe of the Holy Spirit and who God was in that moment. We had teenagers crying. We had leaders praying over each other. Sometimes when you're dealing with what you believe God is calling you to do, that He won't use the craziest things, that maybe He'll just use the most available things. And I think Luke and Caden showed us that, that they were just willing to share their story, really minister to the people in that room and, and our teenagers and ourselves too. So that's definitely a moment that I will never, ever forget. I feel like I'm going to be 50 years old. And when people tell, ask me like, hey, what's an amazing moment that you'll always remember, I'll be talking about that moment. It's just about God moving and wrecking absolutely every single one of us in every single way. So you have POVs like Luke and Cadence, and then you've got sermons from Anushka and, and Michael Takori and my wife, and then you've got what God is doing through Elevation Rhythm. The worship leaders couldn't even hold it together in some moments, trying to lead worship. The, 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 the depth that you saw 
them usher in the power of the Holy Spirit. The way that they did it, it wasn't just the same way. There was no forcing or manufacturing. They were a part of it, but also very much like, oh, we are letting this spirit move. And I remember one of the things that Josh told me, he said, he just kept saying the word radical. Something radical is about to happen. And I think that that's what God wants is someone radical something radical, a desperation. Youth X and Rhythm have such a unique bond. Um, Rhythm was birthed within our youth ministry, and I think we've always seen Youth X as a place to, to stretch our faith in what we believe the songs are that God is calling us to write and to sing. And so Youth X always kind of seems like the lab of like creativity for what God's gonna do next. In the, in the following year for Rhythm. Our team really got to go so much deeper for the first time um, as, a, as just a group. And we spent months like growing deeper with the Lord in our own walks. And this was just like a culmination of just like going deeper in worship. And so we introduced At The Altar um, and it was so beautiful. When the hands of the maker meet the heart of surrender There's no way to be altered. It was really cool to see that rhythm this year was stepping into a place of maturity of not just wanting to be hype, but also wanting to instill hope. And it was really cool because like I'm I'm thinking about the moment that we started and where we actually ended up being. And if you watch the youth X, you'll you'll realize that obviously we always come out with a lot of energy. So night one was just absolutely just like crazy. Started with the choir. The you know the next day we were back into energy mode. Praise was going crazy. Night two we had Aaron Cole come out. We did back then for like 45 minutes. And so like I think everyone thinks like oh that's the only gear that you know that like rhythm is kind of really known for. Hype 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 hype. But what was really cool was what Rhythm wanted to do was just kind of start off with doing very chilled versions of the songs that we knew that our teenagers we know, just kind of a bit of a stripped back version to just kind of sit with the message instead of just always be running or jumping and just like screaming it out at the top of the lungs. We really wanted to, the songs and the messages of the songs to really take root in the hearts of our teenagers. Never was enough to the man, yeah. Got the real thing from the real one You can tell the world, keep the faith low I've been brand new since I woke up Never was enough till I met you Got the real thing from the real one You can tell the world, keep the faith low I've been brand new since I woke up The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 15 Samuel looks at him and says, though you are little in your own eyes, did God not make you king over Israel? That's what insecurity is. You're little in your own eyes. I could see the call on your life. Pastor Tim could see the call on your life. But do you? One of my favorite altar moments was when we had people come forward, students come forward that felt like they were called to full-time ministry. So this ain't for everybody. But this is for a specific group of people. You felt that call. And I just wanted to pray for you and literally commission you. Pastor Mike did two calls because he also called out, some of y'all are in the foster care system. And I'm thinking about Tristan. And Pastor, Pastor Michael Alcatoria is like, Yo, I, don't, I don't know who I'm talking to, but if I'm talking about you, like stand up. But then Tristan stood up, bro, weeping. And you know him. Yeah. He's this tough guy, but he, bro, he's up standing in front of the whole room yeah. and to see Tristan being called out of that moment, but then answering the call himself, yeah. weeping, having random students lay, laying their hands on his shoulder, praying for him. I, I, I'm pushing through the crowd. I'm like, I'm trying to get to him and pray for him too. Takes me a while to get there. Once I get there, I'm like, he's already surrounded by so many people. And I think that was, I think that was the thing God wanted him to know of like, you're answering this call, good, I'm calling you to this, but like, you're not on your own. Yeah. Like, you are already surrounded before you were answering this call. That's one of the things that I'm like, if I wanted to forget it, I can't. 
Over 300 teenagers getting called into full-time ministry? What are we talking about? They're like, yeah, I'm gonna give my life to this thing. I'm gonna give my life to a local church. And that wrecked me. Battle X is like all the teams, competition, we're having fun, we're enjoying it. And you're like, man, can God move through Battle X? I'm like, man, well, we wanted to like do some fun things, do some big things, but like, yes, absolutely. You created an experience and then you got the spirit of God too. I mean, it's, it, it's impactful, it's powerful. It's a punch that can go a lot further and farther than you can ever imagine. Oh, Battle X is wild. I walked in, not, I have an idea of like previous years, but they change it every year. So it's hard to figure out what's going on. I walked in, all of a sudden there's a boxing ring. I don't know if like Muhammad Ali is coming out or whatever, but then all of a sudden I just see people going up like shadow boxing. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Shadow boxing is when two players take turns moving their hand up, down, left, and right in a way that makes their opponent look in the direction they are pointing. In this round, watch as the blue team, the pound, moves their hand left, right, and finally downwards, where he is holding his cell phone ready to take a picture of his opponent, the swamp, looking downwards. Watch as the pound celebrates their victory and this adult man in a sumo outfit dabs up the winner of this round of Battle X. Look at Tim, another adult man, watching this children's game, unable to process what he is seeing. Oh, damn. Oh, okay. That's okay. Okay, oh, that's Christ! Woo! Oh, the swap wins 2,000 points! The, the coolest part about it was it all got broken down. Students were still talking about it. It was the highlight of the night, quite honestly. But I had a youth director uh, send me a text message about one of the participants we had that night and kind of shared a little bit of this story with me. And this is a student that was battling with thoughts of self-harm. And was about to be literally let go from going to youth X, like it was there, was having those ideations, was about to be asked to um, have to go back home, but his mom was volunteering at youth X, so he got to get out of the holding and stay at youth X. And then that night, uh, when that battle hour came, this happened to be one of the students that we got to pick to participate in one of the games. And while the student was participating, I mean, it was the first time that this kid had an opportunity to have an entire crowd of people in his corner, cheering for him, yelling for him. Like they have his back and like he felt seen. He was the hero of the moment. And at a point in his life when he felt unseen, like people didn't care about him, he had an entire group of people just chanting his name, yelling for him, screaming for him. And that's why we do Battle X, is to create moments for students to be able to be the hero of these different games and these situations. And as silly as it might sound, that's a moment he'll probably never forget. And that's what ministry is. Ministry is full of moments. Just like we are co-heirs with Christ, Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit to be our co-man so that we can do greater things than he ever did. I'll never forget doing the salvation call because the first time I do the salvation call, this girl steps right up and she's like, I want to be one of the ones that literally gives my life to Christ. There's a girl in the front row and it was one. 3,000 people in that room and it was one. And immediately, can I be honest with you? Immediately, it's almost like my old self came back and went, oh my God, only one person. Oh, this is not good. This is sad. Or this is like a meat, like pride, ego. Like, yeah, see, wasn't even a good message. Immediately, and I went, no, no, no. I was like, yes, you jacking up. You, me you messing around with me. But we've been praying for this moment. And I looked at that girl, and right after that, it's almost the Lord said, there she is, your co-man. And I went, oh my gosh. Because of your faith, watch how many people walk down here realizing that's for me too. If you want to give your life to Christ, 
and you want to make Jesus the center of your life, and you're saying, tonight is the night. I don't want to play no games. This is urgent, and it's emergency. I want you to come to the front right now, just like Fiona did. Come to the front. Saying, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to co-man. I'm commanding it. The Lord pressing in on your heart. The Lord saying, you know what? You need to be like Fiona. You need a co-man. You've been doing it on your own. You've been doing it on your own. You need me. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Father. And you need the Son. Anyone else? And it was almost an application immediately of what we had just preached about or taught about. And that was that was a moment that was so powerful for for us. Like afterwards, I'm talking with all the youth direction, like, all right, just start talking. Like, what'd you get out of it? What do you remember? What was that? And I remember writing down 27 moments of like, oh my God, this is where I know God was doing something. And I'm just watching these youth directors light up. One of our ladies who's on my committee went and started praying, not just for like our students, but for one of our leaders. Yeah. And that particular leader ended up giving their life to Christ. Mm -hmm. And then wow. was like, yo, I think that this is what I want to do. So when Michael comes the very next morning yeah, yeah, yeah. and he does his call to action, they come up Great. to the front and was like, I think this is what I want to do in my life. He asked like, if, hey, if you want to do full-time ministry or if you feel like a nudge to be doing full-time ministry, I'd like you to come up to the altar. And that was kind of just like my answer. I was just like, Wow, like I, my heart like really felt tugged, and I was like, "Wow, I really want to do this, and I really feel like God's calling me to this." So let me just go up there. We're in worship, and one of our students, Cam, um, he just has this like this hard exterior, and it's this moment where I, I go over to him and I'm praying over him, and the Holy Spirit just takes over, and I get up and I hug him, and he embraced me, and it was just this moment of love that you can feel just God's love in that moment. And then afterwards, we like literally walk off this to the side stage and I can tell he's, it's like he is exhausted, Tim. I was like, are you okay? And he's like, my neck just hurts so bad. And I was like, your neck hurts? Are you okay? He was like, yeah, my neck, oh, my neck. And we talked all throughout the day and later that night. And I was reading something from Charles Spurgeon and it just, it was mentioning that bending the neck of self-will is something that we have to do in order to take on the yoke of being a disciple for Jesus, for to take on His yoke, the call. As we were talking about that, Tim was like, I think I was physically feeling that I was like, my apprehension to say something like that on stage to Michael was my apprehension to the Holy Spirit. But God is saying, I need you to bend your neck low, humility. I need humility to come out of this, and I need you to bend your neck low so that you can take on the yoke of what I'm calling you to do. The sermon was great. I felt like when she was just like talking to me specifically, like, this is your last chance, and like, you need to take it. And then like, I just like heard it, you know? Like God was like saying to me, like, you need to take it. You know what I mean? Like, this is your next step. This pre-service prayer thing, I was like, God, why aren't we doing that in more places? Like, so I was like, we go on these pop-ups and like, nobody's even praying beforehand or maybe they are separately. And so I was like, man, screw it. We're gonna do that at every one of our pop-ups and make sure that we start these things off right and get everybody in the room. And I'm trying so hard to like, just make that be the central focus of everything that we do, that Jesus is the center of it. And like, the team was like, God, like what happened at Youth X? Like something happened to Chad at Youth X. I'm like, I'm like me, it's like, I, I was like, I got saved at Youth X. Are you kidding me? Like, I mean, yeah, after Youth X, like kind of just shifted everything personally, shifted a lot of things for me as a worship leader. I remember going home, like, on the plane and writing like in my notes like I know who I am now the enemy can't take this away it was like an unlocking of like an authority that I had never walked in God revealed so much to me in that time where it's like instead of just typical worship and typical like going into ministry God told me that I want he wants me in a different path of life 
He wants me to do something that not many other people would consider typical ministry, but he wants me to step into a place filled with like athletes instead of an altar. And that is going to be my altar, is being able to pray for other people on the field rather than other people in a pulpit. I was just honestly at my lowest point, you know? And I just like, at that point, I was just like, what is there to lose? Like, I have nobody else. I can't, like, I need to run to him. There's nobody else, you know? No one else can save me. It was hard when she went up front because I wanted to run after her. And I knew that I just had to let her and God have that moment and, and have it not be me because this is the part in her life where it's not my faith anymore. It's not my faith of me dragging her to, to church. This is the part where she needs to run to the Father and it needs to become her, her relationship. After U6 was kind of over uh, and we were all back home, a little bit tired, I got a DM from Erin and um, essentially she's like, hey, I've been praying about it and I'm so glad we were able to chat, but I think the next step that God is calling me to take is to apply for the Elevation internship because I believe that that's maybe where I'm, I'm meant to start my journey within ministry. And uh, fast forward a couple of uh, weeks later, she uh, sent me a screenshot of how she was accepted into the internship program and um, she now serves with our outreach. And the, one of the coolest things that I love is like after hearing some people talk about it, it was like there was so much order and there was so much flow. It never got weird, but it's very supernatural. There was a lot of super that God did and we did it naturally, right? Like it was very much like, yeah, this is what it's supposed to feel like and look like and be like. And you could just tell the people that were there, the leaders that were there, you know, they were changed by it. They were marked by it. They saw something <laughs> this is so crazy because so many people would be like, I've seen things I can't unsee. I heard things that I can't ever unhear. I felt things that I can never unfeel. And it was like, yeah, that was the Spirit of God. That was the Spirit of God saying, yeah, we're about to do something in this generation. We're about to do something in this semester. We're about to do something in this era. And it ain't just stopping here. It's just now starting.